Being able to master Lightroom and develop your raw files professionally is vital. The first advice I give a photographer that comes to me is shoot raw and learn Lightroom to get the best out of your raw files. There are some amazing tricks that I'm gonna show you in this Lightroom video. And if you stay until the end, I'm gonna give you a little surprise that I think will take your photography to the next level. If you don't know these tricks, and if you don't know where well Lightroom, you could be missing out on a lot of things. Getting the best out of your raw files means better photos, better exposure, more clients, and more freedom for you as an artist. I struggled so much when I started photography 15 years ago, but today my work is in over 70 galleries around the world, and I've got five coffee table books out there with one of the largest coffee table books publisher on the planet. My purpose is to help you get better as a photographer, take better photos, better retouching so you can achieve success as a photographer. I'm gonna give you an example with this photo shoot I did a couple of days ago here in Tuscany. So this is how it looked when we arrived. I love how the, you know, the light shapes the, the little valley. And what I'm gonna focus on, there's so many photos I took that afternoon. It's funny, you know, you could be taking bad photos for a week and all of a sudden you're at the right place at the right time and like in 20 minutes, you're gonna get photos that you will use for like 20 years. It's really about timing. Anyways, the timing was perfect. Uh, I mean, not quite, because by the time I arrived on these trees, the sun was already gone. But you will see, I still got some really cool shots. The thing that I do and the way that I work is I shoot RAW and I shoot in manual mode. Why? For example, this photo I shot at 1 30th of a second, f6.3, ISO 100. The next photo that I shoot will be at the same setting. So I always put 100 ISO because you don't want to go over 100 ISO. If you go over 100 ISO, I was on a tripod, you're ruining your photo. So 100 ISO, 6.3, it was good enough for me because for, I just wanted to get the tree sharp. I didn't care if the grass was a little blurry in the foreground. In fact, I thought it was kind of cool. And 1 30th of a second was the right time to get the exposure I wanted. I have a tendency to underexpose my photo a little bit. So that was the first one. So how do we touch this one to make it really cool in Lightroom? Well, the first thing that I always do, and if you've watched my channel, you know this, is opening the shadows, bring down the highlights. Um, and then it looks totally washed out. Then I'm gonna hold on my Alt key on the keyboard and move the black points until I got about two to 3% of darkness. You see these points that you see here, the black, the green, the yellow means that there is no more information. It's pure darkness. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, white point, holding on the Option key and going to the right. Yes, uh, voila. Now on the white point, what I do is I go to the limit. I don't go over here. I don't want to have this. If you see white points when you hold the Alt key, it means that there's no more information. It's pure white. It's like paper. It's not going to print. Now that I have that, usually what I do is I underexpose a little bit the photo to get back the lighting. Now this workflow really works well if you shoot at 100 ISO. If you shoot like 400, 500, 800, it might not work as well because you're rooting your photo and the exposure is gonna be a bit different. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a gradient and I'm gonna click and drag. And what do I wanna do? I wanna add some blue a little bit maybe in the sky, but mostly I wanna lower the exposure and I wanna lower it on the gradient, okay? And you see here is my gradient. You can make your gradient very narrow or you can make it very large. I advise you to make it large and just play around and position it where you want. But you see the problem now, it's darkening a little bit. If I do it here, it's gonna darken the trees, which in this case is kind of okay, but there is an option that maybe you don't know this in Lightroom, which is a range mask off. If you go to luminance and you click here on range and you go to the right side, basically you're not gonna influence any more the trees. I can even show you the mask. It's gonna create a mask and you see the mask is only on the sky. As I go left, it's getting very red. You can see there's some red on the trees. And as I go right, uh, the, the trees are black. There's no more red, meaning whatever I'm doing on this gradient is not gonna influence the trees. So that's what I want. Now I need to find the right white balance for your photo. I always start by correcting my exposure and my contrast with opening the shadows, bringing down the highlights, doing the black and the white. And then I take the time to find the right white balance. So on this one, because it's a raw file, let me go back here. Uh, I can go to daylight, see how daylight is gonna look like. It's very blue. Uh, it's too blue, I think. So let's see how cloudy is gonna be. Cloudy, I don't like because you see now it's, 
the blue is becoming gray and I guess if I go to shade, it's going to be even worse. Yeah, shade, I'm losing all the blue here. But I like what it's doing here. You know what I'm going to do? If I'm going to keep it on shade, I'm even going to add a bit of magenta to make the whole thing very warm, but I'm going to go back to my gradient and add back some blue. The idea is this, you know, you're basically balancing your overall white balance with just a local white balance of the sky. So it's two white balance for one photo. On this one, I think I'm going to add a new gradient just for the top of the photo and lower the exposure because I really want to darken, I really want to close the photo. I want people to look inside of the photo. Okay, and I'm going to make another gradient here with the same value to darken the grass because I really want people to look at the sky. Okay, so I'm done with my gradients. I'm now ready to use the circle, the Rigel Circle Filter. Amazing. I'm going to click and drag and make a big circle where the sun was. And on this one, I'm going to invert it, which is already done and I'm going to feather it. So now whatever I do inside of that circle is going to be happening inside. So what do I want to do? I want to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of magenta and maybe a little bit of exposure. Not that much. Oh, exposure not. Actually, no exposure. Maybe even lowering. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to add a bit of color, but go be very gentle just a little bit to put more emphasis on where the sun was. And here's another trick that's so cool. You can also not do that and just add some saturation because the truth is there was a lot of pink in this area and a raw file is very neutral. So by adding saturation here, just there, you're going to make the reds come a little bit more. Let's see here. You can see the before and after. It's kind of subtle to me. So you know what? I'm just going to add a little bit of magenta on top of it. Yeah, just a little bit because I can and I love it. Okay, and check it out before, after. Okay, now I'm really liking this. Okay, I might add a bit of more contrast and I really like the photo. I'm not going to go into the sharpening and other things. I just want to give you the basic exposure. But now because I shoot RAW, I'm going to take this photo you see here. Again, 1 30th of a second, 6.3 100 ISO. I'm going to take this next photo, which is just a wider angle. I, I, I love to frame with, you know, a little bit of land and a lot of sky. And, but it's the same setting. So I can just press Command Shift C. Take what I did here. Um, yeah, I can even go check all, copy, click on this one and Command V. And all the work that I've done on the first photo is going to be there. Of course, you need to do some adaptation, which I'm going to do. Like, for example, I found that the sky is too blue. And, you know, maybe the circle is not at the right place, but let's correct that. So let's go into the gradient and let's take this gradient, maybe make it a little bit higher. And this one, by making it higher, you are getting the force of this gradient to be less. You know, I'm weakening the gradient. And this one, because the, the land is really low, I need to position it, yes, much lower like this. Okay, I think this one actually, you know what, I want to crop it 16 by 9, I think it would work a lot better. So I'm going to go 16 by 9, crop, boom. I want a bit less sky and I want to be more on a tree. So now that I've done that, I need to go back on my gradients and move them around. Every time you play around with the crop factor, you have to move around your gradients. Okay, now I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to position it more on the right side. Yes, maybe even a bit outside. So it influenced this. I think it's a bit too bright there. So let's hear. You can just make another gradient just for that corner. All right. And lower a bit the exposure. Not so much. Usually I overdo things and then I, you know, go back. Okay. Just a little tiny bit. I just want to get back some blue. And voila. Now I'm going to show you a trick. I think that would really work well in this photo. I showed this uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is a dodge and burn. I shot it on interior design. I'm going to do it on this landscape. Very subtle, but it makes a huge difference. I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to go and just add a bit of exposure, make sure my flow density is in the 70s. And with the middle mouse button, you can make your brush big or small. And I'm just going to, you see here, there is some light here. And I'm just going to bring back even more light here. And maybe here, just because shadows and light makes volume. It gives more depth to your photo, it gives more volume to the hills. You know, it makes, it's just amazing. So usually I overdo it because this is too much 
and then I back it down uh, under 0.5. That's my secret, 0.5. If you go over 0.5, usually it's too much visible. The key is really to have your brush around the 70s on flow and density and not go over 0.50. Even 0.50 might be a little bit too much. Let's go 0.40 and check it out. Before, after. Very subtle, but it makes the photo shine. So I'm really happy with this. This one is very similar to uh, Microsoft. They had a, a background, I think on Windows 98 or Windows XP that was very similar to that. I'm gonna press Command V and it doesn't work, but that's fine. I can just take my black point and adjust it. You see, I like the look that I did on the first two photos, okay? So now by copy and pasting my settings, I know I shot manual, I know there might be a bit of different exposure, but at least by the end I'm done with all these photos, they'll have a similar look, and that's important if you publish all four photos together. So on this one, uh, black point, yeah, about this, white point, let's move this further, all the way, look at that. It already looks really cool. Uh, I'm gonna move my gradients, the first one that I did. And it's just so fun and so fast to work this way by shooting manual and copy and pasting. I really highly recommend it. I think it divided by four the time I spend in front of a computer. And so I can be out there taking photos, you know? All right, no, actually wanna darken the sky a little more on this one. I really like this photo. I don't know what you think about this, but I really like it. Okay, now, I, and let's see here, did I copy the brush? No, I didn't copy the brush. I'm gonna just, just do a little bit of the brush. I mean, this one is naturally, has a lot of uh, already uh, dodge and burn. I'm just gonna enhance it, just like I showed you. Uh, but I'm very little, I think I'm gonna go like 0 040, 0 038. Just a little tiny bit. Uh, okay, and I think my white is a little too strong on this one. I wanna make it a little more moody and dark. Really like this. Here is another one that I did. Now this one is very different. I use this app called Smooth Reflection on my Sony A7R 2 I actually broke my Sony A7R 3 two days ago, so I had to use the 2 as a backup. And in the 2, you have this amazing app called Smooth Reflection. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's just an ability to make long exposure without any filters. In fact, there's a surprise for you at the end of this video where I'll give you more data about this. Okay, anyway, so on this one, I can do the same thing, Command V. It's not gonna work. Well, it actually looks pretty cool right there. And then all I have to do is do my black point and my white point. And before I finish this photo, guys, I wanna ask you something. Uh, please like this video, smash that like button. If you do, something amazing is gonna happen into your life. Or maybe not, but at least you will help me a lot. If you like what I do, I try to make this new format of video. If you can like this video, it just helps the YouTube algorithm to make more exposure for this video. So take a second and push that like button. Merci beaucoup, thank you very much. Also, I would like to hear what you have to say about this video, things you would like to learn. I'm here to help you achieve success as a photographer. Tell me what you would like to learn on photography, on composition, on Lightroom, on Photoshop, on plugins, on other softwares, whatever I can do to help you. I try to make two videos per week, every Tuesday and every Friday, and I need ideas. So please give me some ideas, leave some comments below so I can see how I can help you better. All right, I really like this photo. I think I am going to, yes, maybe just, you know, I just move things around. And again, just move the gradient. I think this one is too blue. So I'm gonna add some yellow, but first I adjust the sky. Yeah, this one, I don't like this part here, so I'm definitely gonna 69 it, what I call. The gallery that I work with has two formats that I mainly work with, four by three or 16 by nine. And I like 16 by nine because it gives like a, a sort of a movie look and you can crop things out like this one, you know? Okay, yeah, that's much better, much better, much better, much better. Okay, now here's one very important trick that I've learned the hard way. When you play around with your white balance and you're going like too blue or too yellow, what you don't want is to have a gray sky. So you see here, blue is okay, but if, as, as I move right and I introduce yellow, my whole sky is becoming grayish and that's not nice. I like it to be either really yellow and it doesn't work on this one because more I add yellow, more it becomes grayish. So you know what, just stay in the blue, but maybe add a bit of magenta because it works really well. Yeah, something like this is really cool. I think I wanna lower the top of the sky because if the top of your sky is very white, the eyes go to the brightest part of the photo. So you're like, uh, you're going to the top of the photo. So I think I wanna make this a little darker like that. Okay, and like this. 
All right, last, we do the magic of the brushing. So I'm just gonna brush here and here. So basically what you do is you find points which already have like highlights, but please, please don't overdo it. I, you know, a lot of people send me photos every day and I can tell right away when they have overdone it. A good rule of thumb is don't go over 0 0.40. 0 0.40 here on this value on exposure and you will be good. I know it's subtle, I know it's not a lot, but less is more in this case. So this is before the brush and after the brush. All right, now time for the surprise. I'm giving you a special section of free videos on this playlist that was gonna help you take your landscape photography to the next level, including how to use a smooth reflection app if you've got a Sony camera. Check it out.